Hello, my name is Dr. Kimberly Cheatham. Welcome to a video presentation on contraception and sterilization. The objectives for this presentation are listed here. Approximately 6 million pregnancies occur in the United States each year, and half are unintended. Of the 3 million unintended pregnancies, almost half are electively terminated. Effective contraception is a necessity for family planning. Unintended pregnancies can occur despite patient use of contraception. Some of the possible reasons why this happens can be from inappropriate use of the contraceptive method by the patient, failure to continue using the method, method failure itself, or barriers to accessing contraception because of cost or inconvenient visits to a clinician or pharmacy. As you counsel patients about their contraceptive choices, consider these factors and how they apply to each individual patient. Avoiding unintended pregnancy is especially important for patients with certain medical conditions. The safest choice for contraception in patients with underlying medical conditions should be provided. The World Health Organization has published comprehensive tables of medical conditions and personal characteristics that can guide contraceptive choice. These tables can be found online. The efficacy of a contraceptive method, or how well it works, depends on correct use of the method. When a contraceptive method is used perfectly, it might still result in pregnancy. This failure rate after perfect use is called the theoretical or perfect use failure rate. In the real world of typical contraceptive users, more mistakes may happen during usage. These mistakes lead to a higher pregnancy rate, which is considered the actual or typical use failure rate. There is a wide variety of contraceptive methods to choose from, and they can be categorized by how many women become pregnant after one year of use. You will want to share this information with your patients who are choosing between different methods. Here is a table that reflects typical use versus perfect use failure rates. Contraceptive efficacy is not the only consideration for a patient who wants contraception. Personal and cultural issues should be discussed to ensure that your patient can access the method and will continue using the method after leaving your office. Many reversible methods of contraception contain hormones. The principal hormone used is a progestin, and some contraceptives also add an estrogen. The primary role of a progestin is to provide the contraceptive function. The primary purpose of adding estrogen is to stabilize the endometrium and decrease the occurrence of breakthrough bleeding, which is unintentional bleeding that occurs during method use. Oral contraceptives are birth control pills that are taken by mouth once daily by the patient. They are a commonly used type of contraceptive and contain an estrogen plus a progestin. Listed here are the mechanisms of action, failure rate, and dosing. Oral contraceptives have many non-contraceptive benefits and also some potential adverse effects. You should know the contraindications to oral contraceptive use to properly counsel your patients. Some medications taken concurrently with oral contraceptives can reduce the pill's efficacy. Here are several medications known or suspected to cause this effect. The transdermal patch is a skin adhesive form of contraceptive applied to certain areas of the skin weekly for three weeks with a subsequent patch-free fourth week to allow for menses to occur. The patch contains estrogen plus a progestin and has similar mechanisms of action and failure rate as oral contraceptives. The dosing for the patch is described here. The patch has multiple benefits and potential adverse effects. You should know that a higher level of estrogen is absorbed from the patch than from other combined hormonal contraceptives, which can lead to an increased occurrence of adverse effects such as deep vein thrombosis. The patch is also not as effective for women over the weight of about 197 pounds. The vaginal ring is a thin, flexible silicone ring placed by the patient into her vagina where it stays for three weeks. The ring is removed the fourth week to allow for menses to occur. After the fourth week is complete, a new ring is placed. It contains estrogen plus a progestin and its mechanisms of action and failure rate are similar to oral contraceptives. Listed here are benefits, potential adverse effects, and contraindications for use of the vaginal ring. 
Progestin-only pills are pills taken by mouth daily that contain only a progestin and no estrogen component. They are an ideal method for women who are lactating or women who have contraindications to using a method that contains estrogen. They require a very conscientious patient because they only work if taken at the same time each day. Listed here are benefits, potential adverse effects, and contraindications to using progestin-only pills. The injectable progestin is a progestin-only contraceptive administered under the trade name Depo-Provera as an intramuscular injection given by a healthcare provider every three months, or as a subcutaneous injection called Depo-Sub-Q Provera 104 given by the patient to herself every three months. Mechanisms of action, failure rate, and dosing are listed here. Benefits and potential adverse effects of the injectable progestin are listed here. Weight gain, delayed return to fertility, and irregular menses are most common with this method. Bone loss may also occur after two years of use. However, to date, this effect has been shown to be reversible. There are no data about fracture risk for the patient later in life. Listed here are contraindications to the use of the injectable progestin. Emergency contraception is available for women who either did not use contraception during a recent episode of intercourse, or their contraceptive method failed, such as with condom breakage. Emergency contraception is not intended to be used regularly for contraception. Plan B is a progestin taken within 72 hours of unprotected intercourse. It is available without a prescription for women aged 17 years and older. Eulopristol is a selective progesterone receptor modulator and is effective up to five days after unprotected intercourse. It is available by prescription. The most effective method of emergency contraception is placement of a copper IUD. It is over 99% effective at preventing pregnancy if it is placed within five days after unprotected intercourse. High doses of oral contraceptives can also be used for emergency contraception. LARC methods of contraception are becoming more popular. LARC is an acronym for Long-Acting Reversible Contraception. Many cities have funding to provide these methods for free to certain populations, which improves access to effective contraception. LARC contraceptive methods include the subdermal implant, the copper IUD, and the progestin IUD. The progestin subdermal implant is progestin only and is placed under the skin of the upper arm by a healthcare provider. It is the most effective reversible method of contraception and is marketed as Implanon or Nexplanon. Listed here are the mechanisms of action, failure rate, and dosing. Benefits and potential adverse effects and contraindications for the progestin implant are listed here. There are currently two types of intrauterine devices or IUDs. IUDs must be placed into the uterine cavity by a healthcare provider in the office. One type of IUD is the progestin-containing IUD. Its mechanisms of action, failure rate, and dosing are listed here. Benefits and potential adverse effects of the progestin-containing IUD are listed here. The other type of IUD contains copper. Its mechanisms of action, failure rate, and dosing are listed here. This is the IUD that can be used for emergency contraception, and it contains no hormones. Benefits and potential adverse effects of the copper-containing IUD are listed here. This slide lists contraindications for both the progestin-containing and the copper-containing IUDs. Non-hormonal barrier methods for contraception are listed here. You should encourage your high-risk patients to use condoms in addition to their usual method for contraception to provide protection against STDs. Occasionally, couples may wish to use the timing of the woman's menstrual cycle to predict ovulation and avoid pregnancy. There are several ways to do this listed on this slide. These methods require strict attention to timing and also require that a woman's cycles occur regularly. Sterilization is a permanent method of contraception that should not be considered by couples unless they are absolutely sure they have completed any desired childbearing. Patients should be counseled that sterilization is permanent. Regret after sterilization occurs in all age groups, but is especially high, up to 20%, for women who undergo sterilization under the age of 30 years. Female sterilization, which includes occlusion of the fallopian tubes, can be performed shortly after birth of a child or at a time unassociated with childbirth. 
Sterilization, like any other contraceptive method, has a risk of failure. Female sterilization failure rates range from 0.5% to 1.3%. Reasons for failure are listed here. Shown here are illustrations of different methods of female sterilization with occlusion of the fallopian tubes. These methods are performed in the operating room suite, often by laparoscopy. Surgical clips, silastic bands, cautery, or excision can be used to interrupt the fallopian tubes and provide sterilization. Another method of female sterilization that occludes the fallopian tubes can be performed hysteroscopically. Hysteroscopic sterilization is performed by using a camera with an operating port placed through the vaginal and cervical openings into the uterus, which eliminates the need for a skin incision. This procedure involves placement of metal springs into the fallopian tubes through the hysteroscope. Tubal tissue grows into the springs over several months and completely blocks the tubes. Three months after the procedure, the patient undergoes an x-ray dye study of the uterus and tubes to ensure that the tubes are blocked. One benefit of this procedure is that it can be performed in the office under local anesthesia. Male sterilization, referred to as a vasectomy, is a very effective permanent contraceptive method. It involves interruption of the vas deferens in the scrotum through a small scrotal incision. This procedure can be performed in the office under local anesthesia. Male sterilization has a low failure rate and is cheaper with fewer complications than female sterilization. It does require follow-up to assure sterility. Thank you for your attention during this video presentation on contraception and sterilization.